Forest with us. I'm Jessica. And I'm Forrest. And we are a newlywed couple that just started to travel the United States. We personally only had like about like $8,000 to spend like on everything including the school bus. So we pretty much had to reclaim everything that we could find. So anything that like my grandma had, my dad had like old pallets. We literally had to just pick up every piece of wood, rip it apart and use it to the best that we could. It, even the little scrap pieces of the pallets that we cut. Sometimes we had to find a little place for them too because that's what we had to work with. As you see everything inside starting, you know, in the doorway there we've got a lot of pallet wood stairs so everything kind of fills up pallet space. Anything when I was first building, I mean, when we were first making our cuts and sanding and staining for like the first time ever, we felt like we wanted to use a material that we could find pretty much anywhere in case we had to redo it. So if Raisin will let us inside, we've got our guard dog here keeping post. We'll go ahead and take you on the tour coming on in. Also, we have our three dogs with us. We have Raisin, who you already saw. We have Bane, and then our little one, Ezio. We're dog people, we couldn't leave them behind. So that was a very important thing in our build and deciding where things went was that there was enough room for us to get around the dogs, which we still have trouble with. But <laughs> even when we had thousands of square feet, they were still underneath our feet. To start off the bus, uh, right at the inside, we've got um, the skeleton head that I had found uh, in Virginia. So we kind of collect little knickknacks along the way. So I got this deer head that was like perfectly sun bleached. So stuck him in the corner there. I wanted to put him on the front of the bus, but she said no. So we found a good spot for him. We've got like our wedding cake topper because this is like our, our honeymoon. We just got married uh, last October, right before Halloween, because we both love Halloween. So we had costume reception. So he was Jack Skellington and I was Sally, of course, and our whole fam friends and family went as different people, and this is just our honeymoon now. So, the accentuation of that, but that was the best party ever. So we got our little wedding cake topper there, little skeleton brides. Um, obviously, man's gotta have his drive in the hat, so I've got, I've got my pretty special hat that I wear to drive the bus, and not the, not the trucker hat that my dad shop, but, uh, so we've got that. And other than that, we've got a pretty sweet seat that her dad had got me for my birthday. Just yeah. online, I searched, you know, captain's chairs, trucker chairs. It We just had it shipped down to Virginia from, I think, from Pennsylvania. And it's worked out so far. Uh, to drive the bus kind of feels like uh, driving a 40-foot long 2 by 4 or like if, if you skateboard and your trucks are too tight, it's like just so bouncy. And sometimes like if you hit the right bridge, it'll kind of get this like flex to it. So it'll just kind of keep bouncing with it after you hit like a good bump. So it's a little rough. Uh, I dumped the fridge for the second time today. So that's not too bad in like 4,800 miles. I've only dumped it, it twice. It's because we filled it up too much. So we just can't fill it up to capacity. We have to leave some space in our fridge so it doesn't open up and crash all over. But luckily, because we're inside here and not pulling something behind us, right. if that happens, I just get up and quickly fix it. <laughs> and he just keeps keeps rolling and makes sure that he doesn't hit a giant pothole and send me flying somewhere. So the gas mileage kind of really depends on like what state we're in. Because in Virginia, we were only getting like eight miles to the gas and going over like the mountains and the hills and stuff like that through like all of Kansas. Like we almost got like 13 miles per gallon in Kansas. Oklahoma was like 12 and Colorado so far, I think we're averaging like 10. So we, it kind of varies in gas mileage depending on the hills and I guess the altitude, a little less oxygen, a little more fuel. And we can only go 55 because it's governed at that. But to be honest, we wouldn't want to go any faster. I want to see this Because place. it might, <laughs> and it would throw our fridge open way more and throw stuff off. True. If we take corners too sharp. Mm -hmm. But slow ride, take it easy, smell some roses. Um, we've got the 7.3 International Turbo Diesel with the Allison transmission. I'm not exactly sure what the model transmission is, but we got big old V8 turbo. Seems like it does pretty solid. And we bought it with 173,000 miles on it. For the chalkboard in the front, we were going to make that into more storage, but that was the end of the build. And we were just like really tired of doing anything. And turns out we had enough storage in the end, but I was a teacher 
and I love artsy stuff and decided to just put it as a chalkboard and write whatever we want. Right now it says home is where you park it and I'm thinking putting in smaller lettering each state we go to like I'll put Texas up there and Colorado and Oklahoma but for the conventions I would erase it and then write the convention like welcome and our YouTube and Facebook information because it was just right in the front and easy mm -hmm. to find and then the outdoor chalkboard just stays as that because the material is different so the chalkboard doesn't work as much it doesn't erase all the way <laughs> so that just stays the way it is the main chalkboard part changes as we go yeah, it was a it was a trial and error <clears throat> but i think we figured it out we were thinking it was going to take between four to six months and it took exactly six months but we had the time constraint of we had to be in san antonio texas on june 4th for our sponsor our solar sponsors mission solar so to be honest if we didn't have that time constraint it probably would have gone further because we wouldn't have been in such a rush at the end and we still have little things here and there we still have to put in some curtains and and stuff but the main build was done in in six months so and that definitely includes like all the heartaches of trying to deal with like plumbing and setting up the water tank and the water pump and obtaining a water tank and we end up getting it out of like an abandoned rv so we were just heading to a friend's house and, like on the side of the road like literally just saw an abandoned rv so being the redneck i am i like ran up and just knocked on the door and i was like she got going with that rv and apparently he's like apparently knew my father forever so he said we looked a lot alike and he wanted 50 bucks for the tank, and I meant to give him the $50. I really did. He just but, forgot. Like, he, he told me, like, I, I kept calling him and calling him, like, he didn't answer until, like, three days before. And it's, like, 50 bucks, and I was like, yeah, sure. Um, but then I'm, like, rushing to go to Texas and moving into the school bus. and. We'll eventually forgot. head back to Virginia and give him the 50 bucks. I'll give you back the 50 bucks. <laughs> if he's watching this. <laughs> we had a blueprint originally. In the very beginning, when we first got the bus, we took measurements, I laid out everything, and immediately something came up. Because <clears throat> you can't see him right now, but where the seats were originally, it was a two legs and then it was connected to the side of the bus so it has like a lip coming out so either we would have to work around the lip or like saw that completely off which would have taken forever so we worked around that once that happened when our original blueprint just fell through immediately i was just like okay we'll take it step by step we'll we'll write out like little things i mean we have the basic where things were gonna go we just took it one step at a time after that we had a few ideas that stuck with us like for our shoe rack and everything we wanted to have a space where we could put our shoes even though I'm wearing my shoes in the bus right now but <laughs> that aside uh, we wanted a place where we could put our shoes when we walked in uh, maybe store like some miscellaneous things computer stuff because this is also our desk so we've got our little hope chest that we reclaim from the habitat for humanity and we put uh, pallet boards that we we stained on top to make it it can be our coffee table it can be my seat to work on my computer to edit videos it can be our storage obviously or it could be like an ottoman where you just kick up your feet when you're sitting on the couch all of our t our towels and linens and stuff are in there and some of our board games and i mostly use it as storage and my seat for working on my desk because with our three dogs they s steal the couch we don't get to sit on the couch as much as we would think we do <laughs> but that's what you get when you travel with three dogs. And you love them dogs. Mm -hmm. So another big thing for us was like, my grandmother has like a barn full of this wormy oak. So we asked if we could have some and she said, yeah, we could. So we went ahead and kind of went bananas with that too. So we definitely wanted to have like a big show piece of that oak because it's just so cool knowing that this 150 years ago was a barn that 60 years ago, my grandparents had ripped that barn down and stored it in their barn. And you know, now we have it in our our home so I just think that's super sick so we ran it through the planer one time to kind of plane into the patina but still have some function to it so some of the boards being so old had warped a little bit more than others so they got um, more character in some spots than others but 
I mean, I got a piece with like for our backsplash there with like all the good little wormholes and it actually still had some bark left on it. So I thought that was pretty, pretty raw and gnarly. So we stuck with that. So putting it together, I mean, definitely was a rough process because like it was one of the earlier cuts of, of good wood that I was trying to do. I mean, you can still see I've got my like marker line at the end where I messed up. I just tried to find like three of the pieces that would fit the tightest together without leaving too big a gaps because I didn't really know how to, you know, cut perfectly flat pieces. So we stuck with the bowed. So it's like all original rough cut on the outside. So I just kind of found the three that fit the best and, and ran with that. And then we just fastened it <clears throat> with hardware underneath here to our cabinets and to our shoe storage to kind of keep it up. The shoe storage is also drilled on the side to keep that stable as well. And <clears throat> we wanted to go with a long counter space because me and Forrest love to cook and we want a lot of prep room so that you know one of us can be prepping onions while the other one is cooking on the stove and not being completely each other's way and enough space to also have my computer or anything else we want to work on on the on a table our top cabinet space is also made out of the old barn wood and with the curvature of a bus that was a big thing because you know regular cabinet tree we would have to have like sawed it into the shape of the bus and I didn't feel like doing that and I wanted it to be more open so it didn't feel like as much of an enclosed space so we pretty much just behind this is our wiring and we just covered that and kind of went out in an L shape and just you know had some metal that we fastened onto the roof to keep it secure while we were going and surprisingly most people asked us how our stuff stays in our cabinetry the only thing I have is this bungee cord for this one area but other than that ev everything yeah everything else actually stays in place except for this cup in particular I tossed that one like once every two or three days I'll toss that guy out and she's like it's fine yeah it's fine but I mean luckily the glassware like I mean we mostly have plastic stuff but we had our wedding recently and people gave us glassware yeah. and we didn't want to let that go to waste surprisingly like I thought we were gonna have to with it being open like this I thought we'd have to have a million bungee cords going through I mean we still have a bungee cord and we have more bungee cords holding other stuff down in our bus like our TV, TV. yeah but besides that everything stays stays pretty good but we do take it pretty slow and smooth and we definitely like try not to speed around turns like I said I've only dumped the fridge twice all of our dishes kind of go up here we got a little space down here for like some big pots and pans and stuff like that and crock silverware. Pot. crock pot brother from another mother gave me one of these and then she ended up buying the other one at habitat for like 40 bucks or something yeah so they're so. different cabinetry yeah. i just sanded it down and just painted it with this teal color because i wanted to give it like a little splash of color in here instead of the all the browns and grays we pretty much got the stove top from Craigslist and everyone loves that we have a full, uh, full, range. <laughs> full range stove. We went and got the orifices from online from actual G who, who makes the oven and they said seven to ten business days. I was like well it better be because we're about to leave and they didn't ship it out until seven to ten business days. So his parents still have it and are waiting for us to actually stay in one place location. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for them to send it out to us. But I'll tell you what, when I do cook on that, it's going to be legendary. <laughs> yeah. But right now, we just use crock pot. We have a, our grill, so we grill outside. Or he has a little skillet. Like a hot plate. <clears throat> a I hot think, plate. I think I ruined that the other day. Just edit that out, though. You, they don't need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> 
way. <laughs> I would say it's definitely like we really do like love to cook and I really enjoy cooking out more just staying at home local so I can just kind of relax and not have to worry about driving back or going through traffic or anything mm -hmm. like that because and it's hard to find a place to park, park a, a bus, bus at a restaurant there's certainly no fast <laughs> yeah. food there's no drive-through option yeah so, like just a, for sheer planning and just for sheer like comfort for us and the dogs might as well just grill out except for now we're like in the middle of a super fire drought so no chance of grilling um. <laughs> <laughs> all right with the floor um, because my husband's six foot and we didn't have enough time to do a roof raise or the capabilities uh, we just went with the height of the original bus so we had to plan to not take up too much with our subflooring so including insulation. <clears throat> including insulation so we instead of going with wood or tile or something as our flooring not only the weight would be a problem but adding those inches to take away from his headroom we went with just like a vinyl that just clicks into place and it's very it's very durable the only problem is is when we move the floor moves so some of the panels that are clicked in come kind of out of place so we have to realign them but we're fine with it and the gray is the best because we've had things fallen onto our floor and have dented or scraped it but you can't really notice unless you get like really close there, yeah. <laughs> and with dogs it hides the dog hair well I mean we do sweep like all the time anyway but at least you know if we don't feel like sweeping it won't be as noticeable as if it was like white I guess the other <clears throat> thing to talk about is we do actually have two different electric circuits running it uh, we did all the lighting it's on right now I ran off the 12 volt uh, system off the school bus because it had like the little dome lights so I even just left the same button up there so we can flick that to get that light going but we've also got like on the solar um, we've got these little, little guys lanterns. just kind of like little lanterns which that is one thing I would have done different on this one is I've hit my head already four times man. on there and actually actually kind of bled a little bit like I cut myself on that thing so, a lot. so headroom is very important just think where where you're gonna fall when you build something so where is your head gonna be when you sit down on your couch where's yeah. your head gonna be when you lay down in bed or come up from laying down in bed you just gotta think and we didn't think about that we were like oh this is just gonna look pretty right there instead yeah. of thinking oh well my head hit that when and i sit on the couch is it a jagged square so that <laughs> we might end up replacing that at least with something round uh at some point but since we're just now getting into it like that's not one of our super big priorities because there's still a few other things we gotta to work on first before jumping in and changing lamps but they do look super sick so pretty happy with that still one way or the other i guess mm -hmm. moving down this side with the mm -hmm. sink we actually picked up the sink from habitat for humanity as well that was like ten dollars so and we got a super big sink so even if uh, we run out of water uh, you know maybe we can go an extra day or two without having to wash a dish before our life is cluttered and you know they're starting to spill everywhere but normally we stay on top of the dishes and try to knock them out every day because what else are we really doing and then with uh, our fridge uh, we went with a three-quarters fridge right now it's sitting on top of our wheel well that we just pallet boarded over and plywooded over and we went with the three-quarter fridge because my husband loves to eat and he eats a lot and we really didn't want to have to go every single day to a grocery store especially if we're in the middle of nowhere and we want to kind of just go off grid and not worry about food and it's just a normal 120 volt fridge that we got from Walmart that was dented so they gave it to us for cheaper so it was only like about a hundred bucks yeah and it fits all of our stuff perfectly most of the time 
until we fill it too much and then it opens but <laughs> that's only happened twice it is so an energy straw but we have like i don't know what it draws like as soon as we got the box like we were so excited to like fill mm -hmm. the space like i mean we just started like putting things in here so we actually saw what we had this like work room because after our original blueprint got messed up like we kind of just put things where we want them like we just stuck a shower pan in a floor and like kind of built around that um, mm -hmm. to try to see how much room we would have so then it was kind of rudimentary like stuck the water tank on the floor and then built the box around it so definitely was kind of rough but uh, yes yeah, so we just got so excited to fill the space that I threw the, but, the box away that said what the uh, draw yeah. was but uh, we have 1800 watts with four deep cycle batteries and we haven't even come close to touching all of our solar like we may get as low as 75 percent capacity like and by the end of the night by, yeah grid and fans yeah and, and charging our electronics and working on my computer and we haven't even come close to worrying even though we win like three or four days with rain and it yeah. still didn't have to worry about it thank goodness all right, so I'm probably gonna have to move some dogs so I can kind of show you what we got going here for our couch. It is our couch. It is also our water tank storage for our fresh water. Like I said, under our couch is our fresh water tank. I've kind of just like got that stuck in there. So that way if we had anybody really heavy kind of set in the middle, um, it wouldn't want to collapse the edges of our, our plywood there uh, that she used to, to do the top. But still it can be pulled out in case I do ever have to pull off the tank, which would be a nightmare. But like I said, 55 gallons, and we just kind of got our pump here, kind of a little switch here to turn it on and off. But we've got uh, half inch pecs ran all the way through. So if you don't have a PEX crimper, it would be cheaper to hire a plumber than to buy that crimper. I'll put it that way. Just keep in mind, if you don't have the crimper available, I would recommend actually probably find somebody that has one or just hire the professional because it's gonna cost you less than the cost of that tool, apparently. We got, a, like I said, this is a 12 volt pump because I was kind of misunderstanding at first how the solar was gonna work. I ran a 12 volt system, but I ended up working that into the school bus's 12 volt system. And the first time I did it, uh, I definitely caught the bus on fire with this one, silly enough, but just with my switch, did some dumb stuff, whatever. So that was one of the times when I, I oh, kind of wanted to let it burn for a second, but then it's like, no, no, mm. don't do that. With 55 gallons, with taking, both of us taking a shower every day, it lasts about a week and a half. We can make it last. And to be honest, it's worked out fine for us because to fill up, we literally just go to like gas stations, see if they have a hookup. Cause we just filled up our 55 gallon tank at the pilot gas station. Yeah, they had a little pump thing and we just had a hose that we plugged into it and filled it up on the outside and took a couple minutes it's not like we plan on going off the grid for more than a week and a half anyway so we'll probably not have to add any more I don't, I don't think, think so. so the way that I got the water to come in is like pretty crude but I think that people might appreciate something like that so to plumb the water into the tank I wasn't exactly sure how to do it and when I first like stuffed the tank up trying to get as like much space as possible with the couch and everything so we could have like room for our wood stove and more importantly it's firebox I was running into problems getting the hose in there so I just kind of like stuffed that 90 degree bend in there and put a whole bunch of hose clamps on it and so far it seems to be working pretty solid so and I uh, also put the little vent tube there so that way it could breathe when I'm trying to fill it up instead of just like always trying to like backsplash and anything weird like that so so far it's doing good um, I know a lot of people like strap theirs down built the box around it we we didn't really strap anything down there because we literally like built it tight so hoping that it'll hold so this is our little wood 
stove area. We plan to just kind of plumb that out through the window there on a 90 degree angle. Once so. it gets cooler and we actually need it, but since it's summer, it's just storage right now. So with the metal though for this, uh, that was another one of the sponsorships with Metal Buildings Incorporated. Whole metal man came through and he hooked us up with the metal for that. Just copper penny. Copper penny. So. <laughs> yeah, over the um, the fireboard stuff. Fireboards. So that's completely fireboard blocked in. So hopefully it'll be actually fireproof. That and the metal itself is like an hour firewall. It's a two hour firewall. Two hour firewall. So between both of those, hopefully it'll hold pretty well there. Um, we'll probably end up doing after we get it out is maybe have like a little hook or a little hatch or something that'll drop down on the outside to like hold the pipes in place. But for now it's just storage. And obviously we won't have it out when we go. This will be just when we're parked somewhere and we need a warm up. But over our fireplace, we have a painting that was given to Forrest for his birthday from a friend in Virginia that we just hung up because it's kind of hard to have artwork and stuff in a moving vehicle. So we had to strap it down there nice and tight. And it's over on this side so that when that pipe does go through, it's not burning up the painting. Yeah, because the pipe will come like right here. So I don't want it to get too close to the painting. That was like my main, the main thing I was concerned about getting really too hot over there. So hopefully that'll uh, still work out, but we'll definitely monitor it really close the first few real burns. So with the bathroom, like we did a composting toilet basically with a separator there. We found it to be a little bit easier though. Uh, instead of trying to make dirt, considering we have three dogs, we just put a trash bag in there because we pick up after three dogs, like three dogs a day. So to us, that just seemed a bit easier, more convenient than like carrying it around with us because uh, like we said, we love to cook. I love to eat. I'm a skinny dude. Sorry. But so we just got a little compost and toilet. Super sweet, simple little box. Pretty easy to get to. Probably not the smoothest job ever seen. I could probably like grind some edges, smooth some of that down. But that was one of the earlier things that I ever put uh, a saw to. So not too shabby that. And in the shower, we've got the waterproof board. And then it's got this coating. I can't remember what the stuff was called, but uh, like a waterproof coating. And then the metal coat. So it kind of hopefully It'll be sealed pretty good and then we've just got the shower pan other than that everything else is pretty well hand built there and for the walls for the like actual like toilet part we've got finished plywood walls and then just some of the like um, just lacquer clear coated it and just put some of the pallet trim around it. that to kind of accent it and make it not look you know not look looks just like pallet board walls so they I just use the toilet the number two in case of emergencies but we're always on the road well not always but a lot of times are on the road so I just go in the gas stations or anywhere else that I can find but other than that it's quick easy and it's very secure when when you have the door closed I mean you're kind of in there because there's no windows so I mean it would have been nice to have a window but at the same time then we have to make sure that no one can see through the window when we're in there yeah. or a vent because like in Texas and Oklahoma <laughs> oh, it, was it was hot. so humid like sitting in there was like a hot box so I was like your own personal little sauna for a minute but then when you get out and you take like that fresh breath of air it was like <sighs> But I mean, usually we're in the middle of nowhere and no one's around us, so I usually have that open. I only have it closed when we have neighbors, neighbors. right? <laughs> or anyone that could peer in. So I did this door set up. I knew I wanted a barn door because with limited space, we can't have any door swinging open and out and you don't want, you can't have anything swinging inward. So I looked up for hardware just for the barn door and that was expensive just for the hardware. So pretty much all I did was I Googled DIY barn door and a few options came up and I kind of took bits and pieces from each one so pretty much this is only you know piping for for plumbing and you got a 90 degree elbow and 
then we cut the pallet boards around it so it fit more flush to the wall because if we put it on the pallet boards themselves it would have came out too far where you could like see kind of in on the side and then we have a track on the bottom as well so that it didn't fly out when we we're moving and we have a latch here to close it when we are moving so it doesn't slide back and forth and I knew I wanted a mirror but I had no clue where to put a mirror in this limited space so pretty much I just adhered a full-length mirror that I just got from Home Depot I adhered the mirror on this with the liquid nails adhesive you get at Home Depot or Lowe's or that and it's like any other adhesive it comes in like that tube that you have the gun with and I just made sure I got it nice and stuck on there so that we didn't have seven years of bad luck when the mirror shattered. A whole outside of our bathroom area is all pallet boards that we've gotten from his father's shop because he has a metal shop and it just comes on pallet boards and Forrest would rip them up. I would sand them down and lacquer them and then we kind of puzzle piece them on there. We kind of cheated and just cut some of them to size but we try to fit them as nicely as possible and it's we just good. clear coated it none of our wood is stained except for the pallet boards on our chest. chest other than that and this this door is stained but other than that all the other wood is not stained it's just clear coated so same with like the cabinets with our closet we really wanted to have like an open space there like no extra doors to be swinging and flying open so uh my grandma and my grandma's barn she also had some old crates that um some old milk crates that uh she had in there one of them happened to have some apples in it that are like old you know apple farms so it's like all wormed out to match the other wood so we thought that was cool um so we had to use or we wanted to use that so that was a big thing is like try to reclaim as much stuff as we can make it as authentic as possible you we know wanted I mean? to go with that rustic feel uh so <clears throat> with the boards we just sanded them and again clear coated them to keep them as original as possible but we had to really clean them out because they've been sitting in a barn for years and years so <laughs> they were kind of dirty and we didn't want to put our clean clothes in dirty baskets so that was definitely um a thing for us and like i said above our closet as well as our pantry and our frit or below is the wheel wells so we didn't really know how to work with the rounded area there so we just kind of built up a little platform to try to give us a flat spot to work with so we kind of used that for you know the height of the fridge and everything and the height of our pantry versus the height of our our closet there so we kind of had to use everything that that we were given to work with with the school bus and, as a build and this is literally the only thing that stayed the same from the original blueprints was what was going over the wheel wells right. we knew we wanted our closet and our fridge and our kitchen cabinetry can you kind of talk how this kitchen works for you do you guys share this space right here so yeah this is both of our closets closets um, I got one half she's got the other half I got one bin she's got the other bin now we do have extra storage above, above the bed. our bed um, is more clothes but other than that that's all our clothes before we moved in here we minimalized as much as we could I literally got rid of three garbage bags full of clothes I gave to the Goodwill and a bag of shoes so we really tried to go with as little amount of clothes as we could and we still have our winter clothes in the back in our little garage like area so once winter comes around we'll just swap out and put all of our summer clothes where our winter clothes were and then just swap them back out that was um, a big <laughs> thing for us to use that space the other thing is uh, with three dogs we had to figure out a place for them to sleep uh, we didn't really want dogs on the bed and our little black dog Ezio like he loves to go under the bed 
head. So given that tendency, we figured we would go ahead and uh, give them a space under the bed so that way they always knew where we were. Right under here. Um, so we made the height to where our old lady dog wouldn't have to duck to get in. So that was crucial because as she gets older, you know, I, I don't want it to her have to duck down and hurt herself trying to get in or out of bed or not even be able to get into bed. Mm -hmm. So And it's low enough for when he sits up in bed, he's not bonking his head on, on the roof every single time. So he has enough room for him to sit comfortably on the bed and for our tallest dog to comfortably get underneath the bed. So that was kind of kind of <laughs> tricky to work that, that middle space between like how tall and everything, everything had to be. So, but we made it work out and for like air ventilation for the dog bed so we can still like lock them in and if we go out, you know, still blow fans and stuff on them and make sure they don't get hot. Uh, we just use the chicken wire, like chicken wire fence in for, you know, a grate to kind of keep them in and allow us to, you know, put the fans on cycle and let them get some air down there if we do have to step out. But we try to take our dogs wherever we can, but there's always going to be places, sadly, that we can't. And and it's kind of hard with three dogs to take them everywhere anyway. So with the storage for our food, we went with shelves here and then that was more of our bathroom stuff and my video games because I love video games. But with that, my only complaint is which isn't a complaint for him is he loves his spices and to be honest i think we can because there's spices up in here and then there's spices above the sink i moved all those I they're all here now <laughs> well i still think we don't need all the spices that we have in there because there's unique spices that we only would use once in a while Compromisers uh, made. You don't need that many shoes either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> but with with the dry storage, to be honest, we mostly get stuff that goes in the fridge. Yeah. Uh, the, and anything that's in dry storage, like we, he loves his cereal. So we'll get a bunch of cereal, but we'll put only one cereal box in there and then put the other cereal boxes in the back. And then once we're done with one cereal box, we'll just pull it, pull that out and put it in there. So it's mostly been working for what we want for now. I mean, we do have to stack some things up on other things. I'll probably add a shelf in yeah, there. Yeah, maybe add a shelf. This is our most like basic thing in the box because this was his first ever Cuts attempt yeah. at carpentry uh, so there's still like we need to <laughs> sand that off it's authentic yeah <laughs> yeah definitely uh i would say self-taught or self uh abused to the point where you made it something happen uh but same i mean both of us never really had yeah. any you know woodworking maybe a class back in high school or middle school you know where you made like a soapbox car but other than that definitely nothing. youtube yeah, YouTube, YouTube is your friend youtube is I, your friend. I YouTube stuff and then showed him it and we try to figure it out from from there I mean sometimes there wouldn't be a specific video for what we want on YouTube so when we were doing YouTube that's kind of why we did it so that hopefully if someone ran in the same problem we had they could be like oh they did it yeah. oh they did it bad so I won't be doing that because yeah. <laughs> we'll be we we kept it where he'd be like oh why I messed up on this I guess I gotta yeah learn from our it. mistakes learn man. from our mistakes and everybody else's watch YouTube I mean, yeah you can learn from their mistakes or you can learn from their mastery so the bed uh, we went with a queen size bed because I flail toss and turn and we wanted to get like a really comfortable one so we got the purple so we didn't have to have like a box the board box spring, or box spring underneath because then I wouldn't be able to set up in bed so we like really had to design like that was one key aspect to make the bed even work with the dog storage was the fact that we didn't have to have a box spring so that was something that we really had to kind of plan around with our bed build but it's really hard to make the bed so um, <laughs> he has to make the bed because he has long enough arms if I get try to make the bed I have to get on the bed and then I'm like trying to like jump up while also 
flinging my arms over and the secret is, is you have to hulk the edges up and then like flop it down on it and then hope that it's tight after that so you you learn the tricks of the trade and like we said we've got our overhead storage uh, two cabinets we each get one cabinet for you know t-shirts and shorts and stuff like that pants or whatever so there is more closet space than just that but then right behind the bed we've got our little partition door so we can either open it up and you know get a breeze going through or if we're at a truck stop and there's trucks behind us we can close it up and have our privacy so we really enjoy that um, we did leave two windows at the head of the bed so we could try to get a little cross breeze and to kind of gauge what time of the day it actually was so if we were oversleeping or and anything then like we, that. we have just branches on the side here that kind of gives you the feel when you're in the bed that you're up in a tree house which which I enjoyed and then I have uh, shoe storage here which I also use as a step for me to get up in the bed because I'm short uh, he can just hop in the bed I have to step on there and then get up in the bed and then we have our TV just <laughs> bungeed on there because I didn't know that there was only certain TVs that you can mount and this was not one of them so that's how we mounted it and then I have my my PlayStation because I like video games and just in case it's raining or we want to watch a movie we want to watch bed. a movie that's what we do all right so right now I'm actually chilling in our garage uh, just to kind of show like our partition door so that way if we want we can open up the school bus get a good breeze going I guess I've locked myself in so I can't open it up yet but um, kind of slide these doors like I said it's a little rudimentary but uh, seals it up seals it up pretty nice so keep that open get some air flowing here in just a second but uh, have a little shelf here too for if we are watching TV we can actually set some drinks and stuff here so I don't know what's the best way to see that but uh, we do have a little bit extra space there and like I said we've got some overhead storage I'll show you my side so and it does go all the way up to the um, the curb of the bus there because I just how do you terminate that and why would you, you got space so to keep the doors from closing we got the big heavy like it's like almost two inches of reclaimed lumber there so it gives it that nice super rustic look and uh so far it's so heavy it hasn't even opened but we need to find a way to like hook it to the ceiling because when she's putting her clothes in she you know she has to hold that up for you know five ten minutes and that that can be kind of uh, cumbersome so that's one thing we'll definitely add to is some clips there for her to to hold that up well now that we've done the inside of the bus guys why don't we go ahead and head on outside so if uh if somebody wants to let me out of the back here and uh we'll We'll take the tour. So with the back of the bus, obviously we've still got some of our solar sponsor uh, vinyls going there as well as our own Insta, YouTube, fun stuff like that. But we've got our backup camera as well that she picked up and it's like wireless. So it was kind of fun learning how to get that one wired in. So basically we just wired it directly into the reverse light. Um, I did mess up the other day and I pulled that wire out with my bicycle because it's kind of an exposed wire at this point. So I just redid that. But originally that antenna was on top of the bus, but uh, coming through Virginia, we hit some trees and some low clearance and uh, it definitely relocated to thank God it's a magnet and that's just where it decided to stick. So And it's been working there, so why move it? Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But other than that, it's basically our garage back here. So and our dog food storage so uh, we've also got our solar bank and everything we keep our garden hose here so we can fill up quick if we do get to uh, you know a pump a water pump or anything keep all the dog food dog bowls all of our fishing gear chainsaw winter clothes we do keep our laundry hamper back here just that way when you get up in the morning whatever throw your open it up throw them in the in the hamper so we've also got other stuff up under the bed so a whole half of up under the bed is still more storage uh, we've put our lawn chairs and bicycle parts and tools miscellaneous things that's our garage stuff extra paint whatever the idea behind the garage in the back I mean we YouTubed 
a hundred other people's builds and had seen that as a pretty good idea and being a mechanic and you know trying to be a handyman I needed to have my tools especially to try to make money on the road so I figured a garage was best and that and we kind of separate you know the living situation from you know just a bulk storage to kind of not have to have everything stored everywhere winter stuff so it just seemed like the best idea for us uh, that and with the solar bank just to kind of have like a little bit of a, a separation wall between all the noise that goes on with like the inverter and charge protector and stuff like that so that kind of helped we only have a thousand watt inverter and that's definitely one thing that I think will definitely end up changing out in the future because we make way more power than we can even use um, and several times I've, I've popped the inverter every time I try to use the hot plate you know trying to test it so at certain times I wish we had went bigger but with our budget that's like really all that we could get that was pretty uh, pretty much one thing we would change there but for right now our battery bank um, is four deep cycle 12 volt batteries ran in series parallel so we're putting out 24 volts so that seems to power you know everything throughout the day and the night pretty solid and with as much solar on the roof as we have and as little power as we can actually use at a time because of our inverter no matter how much power we use at night by noon we're already back to floating so we're, you know not even using any power essentially but basically I've got a really rudimentary system so that way we could still plug into shore power so I've put all of the outlets I wired them to here so that way that's wired to this extension cord which feeds into the hot side of the inverter so that way all I have to do if I want to go to shore power is I just unhook that plug and then I connect to this, this plug in on the outside of the school bus which I'll show you here in just a second and that way that plug in back feeds all of my outlets with power and my solar is still charging my batteries without touching the battery bank so I'm not using any of that power I can just store up it so if I do drain them down whatever you know I can I can back feed and store it up but so far we've never had to plug up because like I said we're making more power than we can use with the um, solar panel itself we've got them set up in two different circuits and we've got 900 watts on one and we've got 900 watts on the other so each one of my fuses here is a separate set of panels so that way if I do have like a problem I can hopefully kind of troubleshoot it by cutting one checking my output cutting the other checking the output so kind of separate the two sets of systems so that way hopefully I can find out you know what's going on then I've just got the inverter and then the batteries lined in on 80 amp and 100 amps so the solar panels are only 15 so hopefully that'll handle if we do go up to a bigger inverter the outlet I was telling you about here is put into the little kind of uh, watertight box so hopefully it'll never um, like you know get water into it I guess I had put a GFI in here at first and I was blowing the GFI in my inverter before I had realized that uh, I didn't need to hook it up that way so I should actually probably put a GFI plug out here but I ended up putting the standard house plug because it wouldn't work in the first way that I tried so this is another thing I would change or I probably will end up changing but the box is staying no matter what because that's a hole that I cut and sealed to the bus and uh, so that's kind of a permanent fixture but it works but it could be a little bit more protected so then we move around not too far uh, to the little storage boxes here. This is just where I keep like the charcoal, the grill head, starter fluid, hatchet, you know, the fun stuff, uh, a little shovel to dig a little fire pit, whatever, whatever we got to work with to, to try to make starting the fire and food happen. Um, but so since it's not, since our propane isn't hooked up at the moment, we've been grilling out a lot. Obviously we won't be doing it here, but like I said, that's mainly how we've been cooking or like on the hot plate or the crock pot has been working pretty well for us but we've been doing fine without it so far I mean we'll probably get the stove hooked up in like a few weeks so no worries there but a little further up we've got just a storage bin which actually is, I guess is locked but there's just firewood in there so in case we had to make another fire that's all that's in that bin is just firewood the sweet propane now my dad had some like spare metal laying around his house or his shop so I just kind of took the 90 degree angle and bend it and cut it in like a half or like cut one of the lips out and then I bend it 
and I screwed it together there to like hold up our propane, which isn't mounted in yet. It can be or plumbed. It's all plumbed up, but I haven't hooked it up yet just because, like I said, we don't have the orifices for the stove. But to lock my tanks in place, I had grinded this pole to death to where it would fit up underneath, like in between that metal and them holes. So that way kind of wedge it to where you wouldn't, you know, be able to shake it. But I don't, I won't ride with it until I put, you know, some actual protection covers on the outside of the box. Cause with it being open, I just don't feel too safe with it. So I'd only put it in there when parked, but I use the floor from the school bus, like the actual rubber flooring to protect the bottom of it a little bit and keep it from shaking too much if, you know, if I did ever want to travel with it. But we'll test that out later down the road. We wanted to kind of keep it homey on the outside, but it's kind of hard when you move around all the time. So we had to bring our uh, Florida Key West crab trap balls. So what these are is we found them in the Florida Keys. They're crab trap balls. So when they sink, they know there's crabs in there and they are all over up in the mangroves and we canoed up in there, pulled them out. So these are all from different crab trap balls and we put them on their string I painted them different colors and if you ever go to the Florida Keys you'll see a lot of homes have this hanging in the front so we kind of wanted to bring Florida with us on the go and that's how we decided to do it so for our outside here this is how we get into how we fill up our 55 gallon water tank we have just the gravity fed which is just putting a hose in there and then we have the the city fed which we haven't used yet so we mostly just been using the hose and filling up at wherever we can we we ask around and most people if you ask them hey can we fill up our water most businesses will be they have no problem with it so the placement of the thing actually turned out to be really um accidental like from the inside of the bus with the measurements i had taken i thought it was going to be in between these two lines so when i was cutting through that part with the just the like cutting wheel as soon as it hit that black metal part of the bus so that first like that first strip cutting across was like smooth like butter then like coming down that side as soon as it hit that like black metal it i wasn't ready for it it like jumped back and i cut my finger like really solid so watch out for that if you're doing this. But now that it's done, the fact that it like lined up with the black line, I think is pretty awesome. Had a little bit of a problem getting it to seal up at first. So we had to like really, really put some like silicone around it and uh, kind of mash it down on there and smooth out the, the rest of it. Cause uh, didn't really want it to leak again. The first one wasn't too fun. Yeah, when you cut a hole in your bus, you just gotta make sure that it's sealed. Sealed, sealed, sealed. So uh, just in case we do park somewhere for a little while, just to be able to get out of the sun, uh, we've always got a guaranteed shady spot under the bus. We've got a little hammock that uh, we kind of just hang up there with eye hooks. So if we do need to get out of the sun for a little bit, we've got a little spot for the perfect siesta. So that was a, that was a must have, you know, uh, coming with the bus life is a little spot to just kind of get away to yourself, especially when you're all tight and flustered with everything. And uh, sometimes having a little bit of space away is nice even though you're not that far kind of gives you your own little spot we got our sponsor here on the side of our bus as you can see from the vinyl for mission solar they supplied our 1800 watt solar panels that are on top of our bus and the inverter we got a, th a thousand inverter and a four battery bank in the back of our bus that pretty much charges and runs everything in our bus except for our propane stove so with uh, mission solar it was it was awesome that they actually like responded back because we ended up having to send like like 10,000 emails to different companies for all sorts of different things we got like four responses back like we would get responses from one company mission solar actually responded like you know one response was a no but I would email like 
all of the people. And then later down the line, I got a yes. So I was like, okay, okay. Yep. So, but that took like six months of emails before anybody said anything. But um, all we had to do for the, our sponsor is put their stuff on the side of the bus and to go to two conventions. We already went to one solar convention in San Antonio already. And the next one is in California in September. Thank you.